Welcome to the Clear Admit MBA Admissions Podcast. I'm your host, Graham Richmond, and this special episode is part of our very popular admissions director Q&A series. Today, I'm thrilled to welcome Emily Brierley from Cambridge University's Judge School of Business. Emily's title is Head of Cambridge MBA Recruitment and Admissions. Uh, she first joined Cambridge back in 2016. By 2018, she had joined the MBA recruitment and admissions team, starting as a coordinator in operations and then candidate management, and she moved into a head role in August of 21. Some of you may have heard Emily on the show for a short episode that we recorded over the summer at the annual GMAC conference, but today we're going to do a deep dive into all aspects of the admissions process at Cambridge Judge. Without further ado, let's bring Emily on here. Welcome, Emily, and thanks so much for doing this. Uh, thank you very much, Graham, and I'm delighted to be here and to join you and to talk with you and, yeah, tell you about all things Cambridge. All right. Well, it's great to have you back on the show. Let's dive right in. I gave a little bit of a summary about your background, but I, I don't know if it was all accurate, so feel free to correct and also um, add. I'd love to just know more about like your background and the path that kind of led you to your current role at Judge. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I've always worked in higher education um, ever since I graduated, Um and I started out in working in the international office uh, of my alma mater. Um, and I worked in a few roles, starting on reception, moving to marketing, promotions. Um, I always loved working with overseas students, um, uh, you know, being that point of contact when they arrive in the UK to start their studies, start their journey, being able to help them along the way. Um, it's an incredibly exciting but nerve wracking time. Uh, having been an international student myself at some point, I, I, you know, I really valued the team that were there to welcome me and make me feel comfortable um, and at home. Um, so I've always really enjoyed working with overseas students and that aspect of it. I went traveling for a bit after that. Um, I, I, got, I worked in Australia. My brother lives out there, so I stayed with him for a bit. And then when I came back to the UK, I did a bit of a weird career move. Um, I became a librarian for about a year and a half. Wow. Um, and that's when I moved to Cambridge. So I joined a graduate trainee librarian program. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're going to be a librarian anywhere, Cambridge is a pretty good place to do it. There's, you know, all the colleges of libraries, all the departments of libraries. They have the big university library. Um, so that was a cool experience. Um, but I quickly realized that, you know, that career path was perhaps not for me when a student shushed me <laughs> in the library. <laughs> I have a pretty loud voice. So yeah, then a job opportunity came up working at Cambridge Admissions Office. So this is the Central University's undergraduate admissions office um, for uh, to help develop a new international student recruitment team. Hmm. Um, so I did that for 18 months. Uh, it was just me and my colleague. Um, we built it up. I believe they're now a team of about eight or nine, which is fantastic. Wow. And then, yeah, moved to judge in 2018 when uh, a role in the MBA admissions and recruitment team came up. Um, I'd never worked in graduate management education, but I love it. I absolutely love it. I love the industry. I love, you know, my peers and colleagues at all the different schools. I love working with the students. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's, it's a fantastic industry to work in. Um, so, yeah, I've been there ever since and had a couple of roles in the team. And now I'm... You know, you know, I'm excited to, to lead the team. Yeah. Oh, that's excellent. Um, and I, I think you've kind of, I have a feeling where you're going to go with this next question um, because you talked about some of the things you like. And I just wondered, yeah, just what is it that you like most about this current role that you're in? And if you're willing, give me something that you don't like too much about it. <laughs> <laughs> what do I like? I think it's the people. I think it's, the, I mean, you know, it's always the people, isn't it? So I have an amazing team that I work with, um, you know, not just the admissions team, but the wider MBA teams, the careers, CJBS careers teams, all the teams, um, you know, in Judge. Judge is a fantastic place to work. There's a really strong community there. But it's also the students, you know, the prospective MBAs I meet, the current students, seeing them go on through their journey to become alumni. I've met some amazing people doing some really incredible things, you know, met some really ins inspirational women, but in particular, you know, along the way that you can kind of like look up to as role models. Um, so yeah, it's quite inspiring in a lot of ways. Um, so yeah, definitely the people, the industry um, are, the, are the bits I love. And what don't I love? <laughs> um, I think higher education is very, it's very busy. Um, I think it's the same with everywhere. It's a lack of time. So there's lots of ideas, lots of things I want to do, but it's just finding time to, to do those on top of everything else. I'm a massive advocate of work-life balance uh, for my own mental health, my own, own well-being. I do have to have that divide and that clear delineation. And that's really important. Um, so it's trying to manage and do everything I want to do in the time that I have um, for, you know, to do it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't know some people are super people and can do it all. I would <laughs> say I'm, I'm, I'm perhaps not one of those people. I, I need that balance. And yeah, and you know, 
And I advocate for that. Yeah, as, as you should. I, I feel like um, it's funny you're talking about not having time because I, I feel like we literally were just hanging out, kind of celebrating the end of one season. And now we've turned into the new application cycle. Um, so it's, yeah, it's just sort of nonstop. And the other thing you said that struck me was um, you mentioned earlier on that one of the things you really enjoyed in those roles that you held even before uh, you were at Cambridge was this idea of helping folks, international students especially, kind of adjust um, and, and come to the UK. And I feel like given the fact that Judge is so international, that piece must still be there for you, right? I mean, you're bringing in a lot of international students every year. Yeah, absolutely. And it's actually a perfect time to talk about that because we've literally just had our registration days last <laughs> week and it's such an amazing time when they arrive and they're excited but they're all also really nervous yeah and everyone feels the same and they think they're the only one that feels that way but every single person I spoke to was like I'm excited but I'm nervous yeah and it is even you know even if you've got like 10 years working experience behind you and you're going to a new country you know with new culture you know different you know, perhaps different values just a completely different setup it is nerve-wracking so it's really I think it's really valuable to know that the support the support there um, you know, not only from your peers, but from, you know, the program team, the people who are going to be helping you along their journey. And I, mm-hmm. I think that's what I find really valuable in, in my job. Yeah. Uh, so I, I guess one of the things I wanted to ask you, and maybe this is a good segue, I, I wanted to know if you'd be willing to like debunk a Cambridge or judge stereotype that's out there. Um, so whatever one you want to pick, um, is there anything you want to kind of, <laughs> um, I think I think I have to say that it has to be that like you don't need a 700 GMAT or a first class degree to be considered. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a common myth across business schools in general. But I think it's something that's really, really heightened at Cambridge. I think because of the institution we are, um, you know, and the focus that there is on academics and research. But I genuinely think it puts people off applying. You know, I've heard people walk past my booth at events and be like, oh, no, Cambridge, I'll never get in there. Um, (laughs) And that really upsets me because, (laughs) you know, you don't know until you try. And we do take an holistic approach. You know, we do look at everything together. And academics are important. And I won't say they're not because they are. Um, You know, we need to know you're going to manage the program. Um, But they are just one part of it. So I'd really encourage people to apply or, you know, get in touch with us and have a chat. But I think people are always surprised when they arrive at Judge. Um, you know, they come to the business school, they see how relaxed it is, how friendly it is, you know, how approachable everyone is, you know, the faculty, the, you know, the staff, the students. Yeah. Um, so I think Cambridge has a bit of a re- reputation that precedes itself, <laughs> um, but it's not. It's, it's not this kind of like terrifying place. I, um, yeah, I, I remember taking the train from London. I was coming out to your campus to have coffee with one of your colleagues, Conrad, who you must know. Um, mm, and yeah. and I remember it was my first time ever going to Cambridge. And I, you know, I had these visions, you know, I'm an American and, and you know, we know what like Princeton and Harvard are, but Cambridge is sort of that next level beyond, you know, kind of. Um, and so I just remember taking a walk around and seeing the campus and, and yeah, having that like, oh, this is intimidating. But then <laughs> getting over to the judge building and hanging out with Conrad and other people on the team it's it's yeah it was very like laid back environment and very welcoming so uh but yeah i think that's that's a great one to debunk what's one new thing that's happening or is going to be happening on campus that you wish people knew more about yeah absolutely okay so i would say uh so this was something that was introduced at the end of this last year so the outgoing class were the first um students and it's called the future forum so this is a a two-day kind of event conference forum essentially Mm -hmm. and that takes place so it marks the end of capstone week for the outgoing class so in easter term easter term is the third term for uh, cambridge mba students cambridge has strange names for all their terms (laughs) and it's the last taught term in cambridge so after easter term there's no more uh, lectures so we really wanted to kind of bring something in to really mark the end of capstone week and kind of really celebrate the end of you know everyone being on campus um together um, so the first one was held this year. It was in, uh, I think it was at the beginning of June. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it was just really, so basically we're just, it's just an opportunity to bring together alumni and students from across different years, different programs, to bring industry and business leaders together. A really great part, and I think a really valuable part, is bringing faculty from other departments ac- across the university to come and talk about the research they're doing. You know, a lot of these like world leading, you know, um, academics who are do, you know, doing what, cutting edge research. So coming in and talking about, you know, current issues like climate change and, and, and AI. So this is a really, really fun, you know, I'm, I think this has been a fantastic event and we're looking forward to it next year. 
Um, you know, we had people come from Pinterest, from Meta. We had alum alumni from Google all come along and, you know, give talks. There were networking events. Um, so, yeah, it was a really valuable opportunity for, you know, our students, um, but also our alumni to kind of, you know, deepen those connections. So the kind of focus for Futures Forum this year was really to focus on the changes you know, I, you know, with everything going on, so the business world is in a constant state of, you know, change, evolution. Right. So industries are shifting, technologies are advancing. There's always going to be new challenges. So staying ahead, you know, of the curve, it's not just a choice, but it's a necessity. Um, and so the inaugural forum really wanted to focus on those changes. So yeah, it brought together industry, leading researchers, you know, seasoned practitioners, um, and it was designed to provide our students with, you know, a roadmap to kind of navigate those ever change, you know, the kind of ever changing world of business. Hmm. Um, so yeah, that's a really exciting new development on the program and we're looking forward, you know, we're already planning ahead for next year oh, wow. and um, kind of seeing what the event will look like then. Okay, excellent. I'm going to I'm going to ask you some questions a little bit later on about the program specifically. I mean, you talked about Easter term and, and you know, these the sort of, um, yeah. you know, how everything's structured. So we'll get into that in a moment, but I know our listeners are always very passionate about understanding the application process. And so we'll have, mm. I want to ask you a couple of questions about that first. So the first one's really simple. I just would love to know, like, take me through the life of an application. So somebody hits submit and they breathe a sigh of relief. And then usually <laughs> after like 15 minutes go by, they turn to panic as they're like, when am I going to find out? And what's next? And when's it going to happen? And blah, blah, blah. Right. So take us through on your side, what happens, you know, to the file once it's submitted and all the way through. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Do you know what? When uh, when I first heard this uh, question, I actually pictured myself as the application, yeah. <laughs> like going through all the, all the channels. Yes. Um, yeah, I see. So I, what I always say to candidates, and I think the best thing with Cambridge MBA um, application and admissions process decision, etc., is always just remember three. So at the moment you hit submit, about three weeks later, you would expect the outcome. So within those three weeks, your application will be reviewed. It will be reviewed by the admissions committee. It will be reviewed by multiple people. And then a decision will be made. And um, outcomes will be sent about three weeks after you've after you've submitted your application, and you'll find out if you've been invited to interview, um, if you've been, you know, it, if, if perhaps you've been unsuccessful, or maybe even if you're placed on a short wait list. Mm -hmm. If you are invited to interview, um, you know, we'll contact you. We'll give you lots of information. You'll be able to kind of choose whether you want to come on campus or do it virtually. We offer both um, in all four rounds. The, you know, the choice is yours. If you do come on campus, we have, you know, we, there'll be a college dinner, there'll be a whole range of interview activities, you'll meet the careers team, have a lunch with current students, etc., as well as your interview. So there are benefits mm. for doing that if you're in a position to do so. Three weeks, so you'll have your interview, um, and then about three weeks after that, you can expect the outcome. So during that time, the admissions committees will meet again, they will review all the interview candidates, their applications, their interview feedback, and then they'll um, decide who they want to make offers to, and the candidates will get those um, will get those decisions whether they've been made an offer um, or if they've been unsuccessful about three weeks after the interview has taken place. Okay, pretty simple. I guess one thing I want to underline is you mentioned that after the interview everything gets looked at again. Yeah. So it's not just, you know, the interview only determining. It's like you go back and read the interview feedback alongside the full application and then make a decision. Oh, yes, absolutely. The interview feedback is, again, just another part. You know, we look at, yeah, we look at everything, your application, your essays, you know, your profile, your academics, mm -hmm. interview feedback, that plays into it as well. Everything's looked at together. And there's a multiple, you know, different people sit on the admissions committees in terms of, um, you know, admissions professionals, but also faculty as well. Mm -hmm. So lots of people have input into the final decision. Okay. Okay, great. Good to know. Yeah, I just feel like sometimes candidates, there's lots of stuff out there on the internet, people saying, oh, if you get an interview at a school, it's the final hurdle. It's all that matters at that point, which is never true um, for, for schools. But anyway, I feel like we need to de debunk that a little bit. Tell me a little bit about the application essays. Like if you had to give one tip to candidates as they sit down for the essay component of the, of the application, what would that tip be? Yeah, I think, I mean, specifically for Cambridge as well, I would say focus on your, on the, your inputs and not just the outputs. So a lot of applications focus just on their takeaways, what they're going to, you know, get take from the program. Mm -hmm. But when we're talking about Cambridge, we do so much work in group projects and I expect, I would expect to see in an application evidence of what you know, each applicant's going to contribute. What is it they're going to bring? I think candidates shy away on MBA applications from like blasting their own horn, like or their own trumpet or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Like 
sell yourself and you know it's your application you know you're probably only going to apply once like it's one opportunity in life where you can absolutely tell us how amazing you are in a (laughs) non-arrogant way yes so you know just yeah you you know be your biggest cheerleader and tell you know kind of tell us you know what you're going to come bring to the you know contribute to the group projects to the classroom discussion what you know why should you join the Cambridge MBA yeah I love that point because I do feel like it's as an admissions reader you know I used to read files too um and I I just, I would always try to envision the person in the classroom and like, what are they, what point are they going to offer in a conversation, uh, in a business case or, and so being able to like sort of, yeah, have them and, you know, if you're, if you're applying to a school thinking about what you're going to be giving back and not just, well, I'm going to get the degree, get the job and and get out, you know, that's, yeah, that's great advice. Uh, We talked about interviews a second ago. I mean, you mentioned three weeks after you apply, you might, so, but tell me about the interview process itself. I mean, you did say that you could go to campus or do it virtually, but in terms of the, like, how should one prepare for the interview itself? Like, what kind of questions are you asking? Is there a certain type of interview that you guys use? That sort of thing. Yeah, I actually think we talked about this recently at the GMAT conference. We talked about um, faculty. So at Cambridge, I think we're a little bit unique um, yes. in this sense that all our, everyone that interviews uh, for the Cambridge MBA has to be interviewed by faculty member. So it's 30 minutes whether it's in person or virtual, either way, it's 30 minutes with a faculty member. So, I mean, I think the great thing about that is, you know, you're going to be interviewed by someone who will teach you on the program. So it's a really great opportunity to get insight into, you know, the curriculum, the faculty, you know, what it would be like to be in a, you know, in a classroom with them. Mm -hmm. But it's really just a conversation. So I know a lot of students get really nervous about it, but, you know, most of most candidates come out afterwards. They've had a great time. They've had a really fantastic, you know, conversation. They've enjoyed the experience. However, saying that, you know, it is still an interview. So prepare like you would any job interview, you know, read through your application. Um, It might have been like, you know, a few weeks or, you know, even longer that you submitted and definitely remind yourself of what you wrote on there um, because the faculty will ask you about it. There's no specific set questions. The faculty kind of run their, each individual, they each run their interviews themselves. However, a few things they will be like, you know, covering is, thinking about what, you know, why an MBA, why now, why Cambridge. Mm -hmm. Um, And they will also be one, uh, you know, they're trying to gauge, um, you know, in terms of your critical thinking skills and what you do with new information as well. So basically ensuring that you're able to manage the the academic expectations on the programme. But it's not like one of those scary Cambridge interviews that you hear where someone, (laughs) you know, gives you an orange and says, what is that? Or something, you know, or, 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 you know. What's the what? What's the difference between Father Christmas and God, or something like <laughs> crazy that you hear about on the internet? So it's not yeah. that kind of Cambridge interview. Okay. <laughs> I would say though, ensure that you've done your research. Again, it's like any job interview, you know, on on about Cambridge, about the MBA, what the program can offer you, how it aligns with your post MBA career goals. Really identify specific areas of the program that are going to help you get there. Um, and, you know, ask questions, you know, do please do ask questions. It's a two way street. Mm-hmm. You know, you're interviewing us as much as we're interviewing you. OK, so if there's anything you want to know, particularly from the faculty, then do ask them, you know, use that time wisely. You know, you'll be able to ask the admissions team anything you want about scholarship applications or college applications or the kind of, you know, the ins and outs of the admissions process. But, you know, whilst you have time with the faculty, think about what it is you really want to know about the curriculum or about Cambridge. So, yeah, it, yeah, I think that would be my advice. One of the last thing I'd say, don't fall into the trap of, you know, trying to know everything about their research area. You know, you don't need to impress them. Um, <laughs> they want to see, you know, critical thinking and originality of thought. So, you know, what do you do when you receive new information? So, you know, disagree with them if you want. You know, they'd, they'd probably like that. <laughs> and they'd, they'd enjoy the discussion and the debate because, you know, that's kind of yeah. what Cambridge is built on, debate, healthy debate. So do the faculty, uh, they have the whole file? Are they reading the whole file before they meet with the candidate? Or do they have sort of pieces of the file? Or They have pieces of it. They yeah. don't have the full information that the admissions committee see. No, so they have a redacted. So certain things are removed. So they'll have a kind of very high overview okay. um, of, of the candidate um, as Got well. It. Okay. Yeah. Good advice. I'm glad that you're like walking us through this because I think, you know, you could see how a candidate might say, wow, it might be intimidating to sit down with a faculty member. Um, But at the same time, 
what a better way to take the pulse of a program, you know? Um, yeah. So anyway, yeah, that that's terrific. Appreciate you providing advice on that. Uh, I think it's, sorry, can I just add? I just yeah, think it's course. really special as well when you, um, when you're interviewed by someone and then you come on campus and you're in their class. And um, <laughs> I, I was speaking to one of our incoming students, at, our new students last week, and they, they were like, oh, it's a thingy. I was interviewed by them. I'm really looking forward to their class. And I just think that's a really kind of, this kind of full circle moment is, uh, it's really lovely. It's also a nice way to keep the faculty engaged in your work of bringing in a class. So I, I can see how yeah. there are benefits there too. So speaking of the faculty, I, I just, your program's different from some of your peers due to its one-year format. And I know maybe that's less so the case in Europe, but from our standpoint, and a lot of people listening are, you know, looking at like two-year programs. So our, our listeners, many of them are thinking about going to the U.S. or even within Europe, they might be looking at some programs that are longer format. So I, I just wanted you to elaborate a bit on like, how is the year structured? And and also, you know, in the U.S., we say two years. It's not actually two years. It's two school years, which is like September to like May, if you're lucky. Right. So it's, you know, so to walk us through your format and how it's laid out. Yeah. Um, so it's structured over four terms. So like I mentioned earlier, Cambridge has some unusual names for terms. So there's Michaelmas, which is the first term, okay. Lent term, second term, Easter term, and then summer term. So actually similar to what you were saying um, about, you know, it's not a full year, the taught terms are the first three terms. So actually, you could say in terms of being on campus in Cambridge, it's a nine month program, but then the summer term, you're doing your individual project. So you may still be in Cambridge, you may be elsewhere um, doing a work placement, which is like an internship essentially. Uh So yeah, it's it's in terms of taught terms, it's from basically um, September to about June. Uh Um, But yeah, so the way the program's structured and designed is is to follow a micro to macro pathway. So in the first term, you start with all, you know, your core classes, everyone will take these. And these are kind of like the building blocks, you know, then you're kind of building the foundations. And alongside that, you'll do your first group project, uh, Cambridge Venture Project, um, which I think we'll probably talk about a bit more in a bit more detail later. And then in the second term, you can kind of, there's still some core classes, but then you can start to tailor it to suit, you know, your own interests, your post-MBA career goals. Um, and you do this through the electives um, that you choose. So you choose three in the second term. And then at the end of the second term, you have your global consulting project. Uh, and you work for, on that for about a month at the end of the second term, so the Lent term. And then in the third term, um, you this is kind of really where you can drill down and focus on a specific area. So you'd have your concentration, which you choose. You can choose one of the nine that we offer. Um, you know, we have ones finance, consulting, entrepreneurship. We also have more niche ones like energy and environment, healthcare strategies and culture arts and media. And alongside that, you'd pick three more electives um, and your group project um, is related to your concentration choice at the end of that third term. Like I was talking about earlier, you'll then have, you know, your capstone week and with the Futures Forum, which kind of celebrates and marks the official end of all your taught lectures in Cambridge. And then in the summer term, you'll do your individual project. And this is really to consolidate everything you've learned over the year in one final project. A few options you can choose from. You could do a research paper. Uh, you could do a work placement. So like I mentioned, uh, an, an internship in everything but name. You could consult for a company on a specific project. So we often see quite a few uh, spin outs from the GCP on this. You could attend the International Business Study Trip. So you'll go with about 30 of your peers to a city. So this year, the students went to Seoul. Last year, they were in Berlin. Wow. And you'd go visit companies. There'd be uh, you know panels um, with alumni. There'd be networking events, cultural immersion activities, and a whole, you know, a whole range of different things. Or you could choose to do a um, Lean Six Sigma project or, or a case study mm-hmm. um, workshop instead. So there's quite a few options in the summer term, and it really depends where each individual student is along their kind of career journey or what it is they kind of want to, to kind of, you know, really deep dive into um, in the summer term. So does that mean that the graduation happens like at the end of summer term or does it happen before they go off and do their things? So they get their certificate, they officially like graduate from the program in se- at the end of September, beginning of October when when everything's done. However, the, the graduation celebration actually takes place the following year in April. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So and that's, yeah. Came, again, Cambridge, very so you you graduate at your college and colleges have different graduation times throughout the year. Okay. And as an MBA team, we provide a big celebration um, in April so people can bring families and friends um, and, you know, graduate together. But 
you can choose to graduate separately um, or earlier on your, you know, if, if you wanted to. Okay. And I, I like the fact, so one of the things I think uh, a sort of a stereotype that comes up is that, oh, one year program is no internship, no ability to, you know, to, and, and it sounds like you can spend your summer interning or it has a different name, but interning, particularly if you're like a career switcher or something, that might be p- something that people would do, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But also I think on, with Cambridge as well, it's all the projects that you do. So that's not the only work experience or, you know, real world application that you're having. You get these like touch points throughout the year through all the different projects you do, which I think are really, really important on, on the one year program. You know, you are essentially almost taking a two year MBA and condensing it into a year, one year. Yeah, It is busy. It's very intensive. <laughs> But if you're someone who, you know, who wants to make a career change, you want to make it quickly, you don't want to spend two years out of what, you know, out of your out of your career or, you know, finance an MBA for two years and what, you know, the one year MBA is a good option. Yeah, sounds like it. I guess we, we talked a little bit about this, but there are all these hands-on projects, right? I mean, and, and I think the program is kind of known for that. So there's the Cambridge Venture Project, uh, the Global Consulting Project, uh, you know, just tell me, like, it sounds like they integrate really well into the curriculum. I mean, you mentioned the Global um, Consulting Project happens at the end of the second uh term is it or semester i can't remember what, what term you guys use um Lent, Lent term. the Lent term um, but <laughs> yeah. but yeah just what what tell me just are, are those the two main ones are there other opportunities for this sort of hands-on work so those are the two key ones um they're the, they're the live um live projects with real clients okay. you will do another group project at the end of the third term um, but it is the cambridge venture project and the global consulting project um, and they are a core part of the experience so we we don't want students to just learn the theory. We want them to be able to apply it, you know, to real world situations. Mm-hmm. So you're taking what you're learning in the curriculum and you're applying it to these live projects. My colleague uh, in careers um, ex- says it the best way. She was like, you're basically learning something in the classroom on Monday. And then on Tuesday, you're applying it to your CVP the next day. You know, you're literally having that immediate application, you know, which is incredibly beneficial. You know, you can, you know, for, for the students and um, so they're not just theorizing it. Um, there is a core class, a core course as well called management practice, which re- um, really applies to the Cambridge to the to both the projects. Um, and so, with the Cambridge Venture Project in the first term, uh, management practice focuses on managing team dynamics, and you're applying that to your project when you start. And that's really important because when you arrive to start the Cambridge MBA, you are put into this very small study group. These teams are. Um, engineered to be as diverse as possible. So they're people from different industries, backgrounds that perhaps you've not had the option to work with before. Mm -hmm. And the Cambridge Venture Project is a market analysis project with a Cambridge-based client. And often these companies will have a very niche technology or, or science or product that the first thing the students are going to have to do is to get their head around. So this is, I mean, what's great about this is it evens the playing field. So, you know, you might join and, you know, you're the finance person or you're the consulting person, but you're all thrown together on this project and you're all having to work together from, you know, starting from the same point, Mm -hmm. which I think is a really, really great thing. Um, And it also allows students to get outside of their comfort zone. So if you are someone who, you know, if you are the strategy person, it gives you the opportunity to to wear a different hat, try on a different hat. So maybe you step back and you try being the finance person or, you know, or the the consulting person or someone else to, you know, you want to stretch yourself and put yourself outside of your comfort zone. And students are really, really encouraged to do that um, on the on the different projects. Hmm. But, yeah, the Cambridge Venture Project in particular, I think, is a real um, learning experience for our students. Um, And they learn a lot about themselves and what it means to work in a team. And then when you get to the Global Consulting Project, so again, a real, this is a live project for a real company, you know, could, you are solving a a problem effectively that could, you know, have a financial impact on a company. And you're taking everything that you've learned, you know, from the Michaelmas terms, from the Lent terms, um, and you're applying that to your Global Consulting Project. And it's a a really valuable learning opportunity um, and also an opportunity to experience new sectors or new roles. Um, so I think this is the great thing with the projects. You know, if, if you are someone who wants to pivot and you're wanting to go into a new area that you don't have any experience in, the, the projects are a great way to gain that experience because you're going to be able to lay, you're going to be able to draw on that experience later on in interviews and you're going to be able to talk about it and put it on your CV and on your LinkedIn. Yeah. And so you're going to be able to demonstrate that you have that experience. Got it. Yeah. So I guess, I mean, you're, 
it, it does sound like the, this sort of hands-on stuff is sort of front and center um, in the program, which is great for a one year, I think, because, you know, as we were talking about before, it gives you a chance to have these multiple touch points to, what, what did the career person say? To take what you've learned and put it into play right away yeah. uh, so that when you actually hit the job market, you can do some good things. One last question for you before, so we, one last serious question. We have a bunch of lightning round questions that are fun um, that we always do at the end, but the last serious question is about the relationship between judge and the broader Cambridge University. And I guess, you know, like we were talking about earlier, I mean, Cambridge has this sort of, um, you know, uh, like really famous reputation. It's a, it's a renowned university. And so I just wondered to what extent do students uh, at Judge sort of tap into the broader kind of Cambridge University alumni network and, and just all the other great resources that, you know, the university provides? Yeah. Yeah. I think the kind of Cambridge collegiate system is, is, is always quite interesting when you first come to it and navigate it I remember when I first moved to Cambridge and I was like excuse me it works how mm-hmm. um, so you, you know you have all the 31 colleges they're autonomous but related and then you have all the departments of the university the students studying um, and as a Cambridge MBA you study in judge which is a department but you're also a member of one of these fantastic colleges mm-hmm. um, and a member of the you are a student at the University of Cambridge so there's lots of ways students can get involved in the wider Cambridge ecosystem or the col- you know in their college life it really depends on the individual and how they want to get involved and what they want to do outside of the program because that kind of tends to be how they'll engage outside of, of the MBA program mm-hmm. so most students usually kind of uh, tend to get involved in, at their, in their college whether it's through sports or clubs, things like that. Some might get involved at a university level. So if you're someone that excels in something, so we always get rowers every year. We had rugby players, you know, who joined the University of Cambridge, you know, rowing team and, mm-hmm. uh, and rugby teams who take play, you know, who go and then uh, get involved in the varsity against Oxford. So, you know, the boat, famous <laughs> boat race. Um, last year, one of our uh, students took place in the rugby varsity, which used to take place in Twickenham, which was always an amazing experience going along and seeing all the NBA cohort there cheering for their for their uh, peers. Um, you could get involved in theatre. One of our MBAs got involved with ADC Theatre, which is very famous. It's kind of the home of uh, Footlights. So, you know, the uh, Dramatic Society in Cambridge where people like Stephen Fry, Hugh Laurie, Rowan Atkinson, Emma Thompson, they all came through Footlights. Oh, wow. uh, one of our MBAs did a one-woman show during her time at the ADC Theatre. Hmm. Um, you can get involved with things more related to MBAs. So, you know, the university has business societies, entrepreneurship societies. Um, there's a Cambridge University Women in Business. Um, so a lot of our MBAs get involved in that and they'll mentor un- uh, undergraduate women oh, wow. as well who perhaps maybe want to then go on and start their own business later on or aren't sure kind of what to do next after they finish their studies. So that's a really fantastic opportunity for mentorship and coaching. You can also get involved in the Cambridge Union and the Debate Society. I know a lot of students have uh, done this in order to develop their own presentation skills and their critical thinking skills. So yeah, loads of ways to get involved, um, but mostly it's just a great way to meet other students mm. studying different things. Yeah. And, you know, it's not uncommon for students to start businesses with, you know, engineers or scientists that they meet in their colleges. Um, so it is a really valuable part of the experience and really adds another dynamic to your time on the MBA. But it then also means that when you do graduate, like you've mentioned, you have this very extensive network. So you have all these kind of little pockets of different uh, networks you can tap into so you'd be an alumni of judge mm-hmm. um, and then you're you're the alumni of your college and if you're part of a very old college which has a very long history you know that has a very extensive alumni network and you're then also on top of that a member an alumni member of the wider university of cambridge yeah and on top of that then oxbridge um and you know there's ch- chapters all around the world i met an mba one of our mbas in vienna um, a few years ago who was the uh who led the Oxbridge chapter mm-hmm. in uh, in Vienna as well. So there's lots of different uh, next net networks you'll be able to um, tap into, and it's uh, ensuring that you kind of utilize those and leverage those, um, you know, you know, as best you can. Yeah, I think. I mean, one of the things that strikes me is that the fact that you're putting the judge students into um, colleges is great because it, like you just said, they, they can then have relationships with people who are engineers or, you know, people who are in other programs or paths of study at the university. Um, it's a great way, I think. I mean, and that's not something that actually happens in the U.S. I mean, there are some, uh, some of the Ivy Leagues have colleges and things too, but it, on the MBA side, usually you're just kind of siloed into the MBA. So it's really interesting that you guys um, do that. I think it's great. 
Uh, wow, I've, I've learned a lot about Judge through this conversation, which is why I'm so glad that I had you on the show. I did want to ask you if we could do these lightning round questions, which are, uh, the idea is that we want our everyone tuned in who maybe is thinking about Cambridge, Judge, to learn a little bit more about you and to recognize that you're not a scary gatekeeper um, deciding their fate, um, but that you're a regular person too. <laughs> um, so I'll just, I'll just throw them at you. These are just quick kind of, um, answers. So we'll start with an easy one, coffee or tea? Oh, coffee. Okay. Wow. You're in the UK. I wasn't sure where that would go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, beach or mountains? Uh, mountains. Okay. Morning person or night owl? Uh, morning person. Okay. Annoyingly. <laughs> <laughs> what is a pet peeve that you have? Oh, people dropping litter. Just put it in a bin. <laughs> yeah, that's um, that's yeah, great one. Uh, guilty pleasure. Oh, uh, <laughs> read it. Probably reading a trashy YA fantasy novel <laughs> or watching Bluey. Okay. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> um, what about your favorite virtue in others besides that they don't litter? <laughs> <laughs> uh, compassion. Okay. Uh, what's your happy place? Somewhere you like to hang out? Oh. Uh, Anywhere out in nature, I'd say, preferably on top of a mountain <laughs> and somewhere hot. Okay. Okay, I'm thinking of Cape Town. I'm thinking of Cape Town. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. 100%. Uh, a comfort food. Oh, pasta. Okay. And what about a proudest moment? Oh, that was tough. I mean, aside from coming on the Cleared Met podcast, obviously. <laughs> uh, yeah, apart from this moment. <laughs> Do you know, anytime I can watch my team develop or grow, um, anytime they receive great feedback, which they do all the time because they're amazing, I feel like a proud mama hen. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, what about a superpower that you wish you had? Flight. Okay. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never have to get on a plane again. Yeah. And you could also, you know, get yourself directly to the top of these mountains that you were talking about. <laughs> exactly. I could go to Cape Town right now. <laughs> That's right. Uh, okay. Which part? of your own admissions process would you most like to skip if you were applying to judge? <laughs> oh, I guess it's not just ours, but it's everyone's, but the test, 100% the test. Yeah. Like, I... I am not a fan of standardized testing and I am in awe of all the people that do it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's our most popular response because we've done these with a lot of schools over the years. Everyone says that, yeah. <laughs> I bet they do. <laughs> yeah, and then if you're willing, what's the best thing that you've either read or watched or, or even listened to recently? Oh, Oh, so I read a lot, a lot of fiction for like, you mm. know, that's kind of like my escapism. I've read a lot, quite a lot of good things this year. I uh, finally read Homecoming by Yargassi, Flowers for Algernon, heartbreaking. Mm. I think my favourite novel this year, though, is a novel called Our Wives Under the Sea. Mm. Um, it's like this contemporary LGBTQ gothic. Um, it's very suspenseful, very atmospheric. It's a bit of a slow burn. So like if you're someone who loves Dracula, I love Dracula, <laughs> then you'll probably enjoy it. But like I know a lot of people didn't like it because it's this slow burn build up and then it's like, oh, did anything really happen? I love it. I love that. <laughs> Our Wives Under the Sea. It's amazing. Okay. I read it in one sitting. It was so good. Oh, wow. Okay. Noted. Um, well, Emily, I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule, especially now that I know your first deadline has passed. So you're probably frantically reading through files. And then I know you have another, <laughs> you have another deadline in, in October, right? So um, yeah, things are off to the races with this admission cycle. So I really appreciate you making time. I know. Thank you for having me, Graham, and for inviting me along. It's always a pleasure to catch up and, and, and have a chat. So thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. All right, everyone, please stay tuned to the Clear Admit MBA Admissions Podcast for more admissions director Q&As, as well as our weekly Wiretaps episodes. And as always, thanks for rating and reviewing this podcast wherever you listen.